Imagine a world plunged into utter darkness, where every path is obscured, and no light exists to guide the way. In this void of spiritual and moral clarity, humanity stumbles blindly, desperately seeking a beacon to illuminate the truths of existence. This was the state of the world before the arrival of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, a time of profound disorientation and confusion. In this profound sermon 63 from Najul Balaga, Imam Ali Rihatullah takes us back to that critical juncture in human history, offering timeless wisdom on how to navigate the transient nature of our worldly life in preparation for the eternal hereafter. Allah deputed the Prophet peace be upon him when no sign of guidance existed, no beacon was giving light, and no passage was clear. I advise you, O creatures of Allah, to be afraid of Allah, who gave you good clothing and bestowed an abundance of sustenance on you. Should there be no reward for fear nor punishment for committing evil, even then it would be appropriate to pursue nobility and keep away from ignominy and vices. A man from the companions of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his progeny, stood up and said, O Amir al muminin you have made the world despicable for us and inclined us towards the next world, so much so that we feel as if we are seeing it with our very eyes. Amir al muminin replied to him and said, Had we seen what you see, we would not have exerted ourselves so much. Then he, Amir al muminin said, O people, certainly this world is a place of transit, while the next is a place of abiding. Therefore, take provision from your transit station for your abiding place, and do not tear the curtains that are between you and him who knows your secrets. Get ready for your departure from this world and do not make it remote and take with you full provision for your journey. In this sermon, Imam Ali Rihatullah begins by vividly describing the state of the world before the arrival of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. He paints a picture of a world devoid of guidance, light, and clear pathways, indicating a period of moral and spiritual darkness. This was a time when humanity lacked direction and was in desperate need of a guiding force to illuminate the way towards righteousness and truth. The Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him role in this context becomes paramount. Allah sent him as a beacon of light, a source of guidance to lead humanity out of this darkness. The Prophet's, peace be upon him, mission was to provide the moral and spiritual direction that the world so desperately needed. His teachings and example were meant to illuminate the paths of righteousness, showing people how to live lives aligned with divine principles. Imam Ali Rihatullah then turns his attention to the people, advising them to fear Allah. This fear is not merely a fear of punishment but a profound sense of awe, respect, and consciousness of Allah's omnipresence and attributes. It is an acknowledgement of the immense blessings that Allah has bestowed upon humanity, such as good clothing and abundant sustenance. These blessings are meant to remind people of Allah's generosity and to inspire a sense of gratitude and reverence towards Him. Importantly, Imam Ali makes a philosophical point about the intrinsic value of righteousness and the inherent ugliness of vice. He asserts that even if there were no rewards for good deeds or punishments for evil ones, it would still be worthy to pursue nobility and avoid disgrace. This highlights the inherent worth of virtuous behavior and the natural repulsiveness of immoral actions, independent of any external consequences. Virtue and vice are intrinsically valuable and detestable, respectively, regardless of the presence of divine reward or punishment. At this juncture, one of the prophets, peace be upon him, companion stands up and expresses a sense of disillusionment with the world. Influenced by Imam Ali's words, he feels as though the depiction of the afterlife is so vivid and real that it seems almost tangible. This reaction underscores the powerful impact of Imam Ali's message which has moved the companion to view the world and the hereafter in a new light. Imam Ali Rihat Ullah responds with humility and a realistic perspective. He states that if they had truly seen what the companion claims to see, they would not need to exert themselves so much. This implies that their efforts in righteousness and piety are driven by faith and conviction rather than direct observation of the afterlife. It highlights the importance of faith in motivating righteous behavior and the recognition that true understanding and insight often come through faith rather than sight. Addressing the broader audience, Imam Ali Rihatullah uses a powerful metaphor to describe the world as a place of transit, while the next world, the afterlife, is a place of permanence. This metaphor emphasizes the temporary nature of earthly life compared to the eternal nature of the hereafter. The transient nature of this world means that people should not become too attached to it or its fleeting pleasures. Instead, they should focus on preparing for the eternal life that awaits them. 
Given this transient nature, Imam Ali Ramatullah advises people to prepare for their journey to the afterlife by accumulating good deeds and righteous behavior. He cautions them against actions that could tear the curtains between them and Allah, who knows their secrets. These curtains symbolize the barriers that protect their souls from divine displeasure, and tearing them would mean engaging in sinful acts that expose them to divine wrath. It is a call to live a life of piety and righteousness, constantly mindful of Allah's omniscience and the consequences of one's actions. Finally, Imam Ali Rihat Ullah emphasizes the urgency of preparing for departure from this world. He advises against delaying this preparation, stressing that one should gather full provisions, righteous deeds and piety, for the journey to the eternal abode. This call to action serves as a reminder that life is fleeting, and the time to prepare for the hereafter is now. By living a life of virtue and mindfulness, one can ensure a favorable outcome in the eternal life that awaits after death.